I want to respond bien y tu every time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> bien is you okay? Yeah, you okay? Okay. What is it? 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 Yeah, what? So. No, you're okay. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Talk, talk, Okay, anybody got any questions, things that you've been thinking about? If not, we got a little exercise that comes from on a hook. That was a great idea. So let me share my screen. So the goal here is to do a little bit of sentence construction. So we're going to be making some language. Um, and these are based on phrases from beginning clinket, which We'll also probably revisit today. So we're still in this mode where we're uh, getting ourselves ready for these sort of immersion Thursdays that we've been thinking about. I'm going to just invite some folks and just say if, if folks want to come by on Thursday and chat with us, they can. Uh, and then we'll just sort of use those as days to kind of flex our language muscles. But so I thought. Uh, can anybody translate that? Let's do these little translation exercises. What is it in Clinket? Yeah, how is it said in Clinket? How is it said in Clinket? <laughs> so, uh, as you see on the right hand side, all right, the phrase is from English, and so we're going to go from English to Clinket. After this, we'll go back to Tagha and go Clinket to English. Um, and so these, these are just fun. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is um, just kind of have a bit of an organic process. So this... There's only four of us, so as you're thinking, you know, if you know something, now there's five of us, you can. Uh, as you look at these, if you have an idea, go ahead and uh, say it. And then if, uh, if you've offered quite a few, you might take a pause and see if anybody else has a thought before you, you know, I was in a class once and I like to talk. And the teacher would ask questions, and then halfway through the semester, I'd raise my hand and I'd say, Anybody else? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be heartbroken by it. I'm fine. But uh, anyway, so we just want to make sure that everybody's having a chance. We want to make sure that folks aren't uh, are kind of just hiding out, too. You know, I mean, it's, it's a bold thing. All we're doing is trying. Uh, we're going to get the answers, and for some of these, there might be multiple ways to kind of say it. Some of these might be kind of new things that we have to uh, think about. Uh, let me open up a document here in the background before we get started. So guys, take a look at those. Get your resources ready. You should have your dictionaries and other things ready to go. Let's use this. I'm going to throw the verb dictionary up here for us to look at. There's another document called the Verbal Structure Handbook, which um, maybe as we're sort of gearing up for translation, I could talk about this pretty briefly. Uh, but basically, the further you get into your Clinket language studies, the more relevant I think this document becomes. This is made by Zeus James Crippen. Uh, and basically, if you think of the way a verb works, uh, the way things appear from what would say left to right, from the first thing you hear to the last, 
That's how this generally presents uh, information. It's pretty condensed, so it's not. Um, uh, if uh, someone was just beginning with Clinkit and they started looking at this, a lot of it might not make sense. Uh, but what it does is it starts out with introduction to Clinkit, the sounds that are in Clinkit, um, some information on dialects and the language, some information on uh, nouns, what we call like alienable and unalienable, um, some stuff with uh, some suffixes, so like a little chart that talks about uh, the possessive suffix, you know, and then there's some suffixes that could appear on nouns here. There are directional terms, so these are locked in directional terms, like uh, we covered a few of these, like to the shore, down to the shore, uh, up from the shore. The next page has a, a comprehensive list of what we call relational nouns. And so here is middle of, alongside, uh, leaving behind, you know, direction. So there's, there's a whole bunch of these. So these are just kind of fun things if you want to learn more of them and see them, a whole bunch of them in one place. Uh, then we get um, some information. Here's uh, your list of adjectives. So if you weren't sure how to say uh, ancient, it's there. If you weren't sure how to say old, it's there. Monstrous, female, male. Um, uh, female and male, when we use those, those are used for non-human things. Otherwise, it would be qa'a or shabwata. That's how you'd say male and female for uh, humans. And then you've got uh, a list of pronouns. So here's your pronoun list. And then these are, they're great. They're a little bit more condensed than some of the stuff that we've been using. Uh, it gets into verbs and having subjects and objects and postpositions. The, these are all the different potential parts that could be in a verb. Uh, here's all the a list of things that you might commonly find in those different sort of slots, the things that we call them. Uh, here's a bunch of preverbs that could pop up, and these preverbs, we haven't even talked about motion verbs, we'll talk about those later, but the preverb really affects it. Uh, it talks about what type of motion it is. And then uh, we got some nouns that can be built into the verb itself. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of them. So like when we say tundatani, it's this one. And we say shuwuhi, um, uh, it's this one. And we say khashakach, it's this one. Uh, and so there's, there's a whole bunch of these. Some of these are more common than others. Then it gets into what we call stem variation, which we haven't even talked about. This is just saying uh, when you have a verb and you put it into a certain mode, is what's the, what's the vowel going to be like in the verb root. And it's predictable, but it's super complicated. Uh, and then it's got stuff on verb modes, like what's kind of required for them. Uh, it starts to get pretty thick right here. Some other stuff about verb modes. Um, some things about the conjugation class. Uh, some things about the classifier. Some rules of contraction. Um, and then here's a bunch of things like it, it starts to give you a prefixes. So if you want to say, and, and so this stuff is a little bit hard to read, but here's all the futures. So if you looked at this and you say, I am going to, it's going to be one of these options. Uh, we are going to, it's going to be one of these options. You are going to, y'all are going to, someone is going to, uh, he or she is going to. And then we get um, whether or not there's, and then this, this second category here is if there's a thematic prefix on the front. So super useful, but kind of inaccessible until you start getting some of these bigger concepts down. Uh, but there might be areas where we sort of, we rely on that today. Uh, okay. So we also are messing around a little bit with objects here. Sometimes we're going to use the uh, fourth person 
non-human object, which is going to be at, and that's going to change the verb a little bit. Sometimes there'll be a third person in there. So, the translation we're looking for right now is I am cooking. Can anybody give me that one? I am cooking. Chasei <laughs> uh, would be uh, the second part. There's one thing that's missing from it because chasei would be I am cooking it. So I might have just given you the answer for number two. So there's something and then chasei. At chasei. So everybody say at chasei. At chasei. At chasei. At chasei. So that's just I am cooking. What are you doing? I'm cooking. But then when you say I'm cooking it, now the at is going to change, right? And what we're going to see, it's going to go away, but it's actually becoming the third person object, which is just a zero marker, which is why we don't see anything there. So I am cooking it. We would expect what? Chasei. Chasei. say chasei. 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 So if you say what you're cooking, the at will not be there. But otherwise, and so there's a slight difference between these things. What are you doing? Oh, I'm cooking it. What are you doing? Oh, I'm cooking. Right? So sometimes you're going to specify, sometimes not. Um, okay. So now, somebody give me, I am cooking fish. Chad chasei. 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 Mm. I'm cooking deer meat. <laughs> right, so now we can have anything. We've got a blank for our fill in the blank type of things. <laughs> oh, I can't remember how I did this one. Okay, I should have it right. Maybe. I am cooking. I might say I'm cooking it. I can't remember. I am cooking for my mother. <laughs> yeah, yes chasei. So this one is I am cooking it for my mother. Let me just add that just that we're sort of thinking about it. Okay, and then it could it could be chasei achta yes achta yes this is one where the word order is pretty flexible, right? And so, but some of it could depend, like if someone's talking to us, what are you working on? So that you answer the question first, and then the other stuff becomes secondary information. Who are you cooking for? Right? But as far as just to sort of make the sentence, it could go either way, right? There's not a right and wrong way. So if you were saying, I'm cooking deer meat for my mother, wh which goes, which would go in, would you say, start with deer meat for my mother or? <laughs> you like go with the most important information first. So it kind of depends, if someone is asking you, like, what are you cooking for your mother, mm -hmm. right? Or what are you cooking? Like someone comes in, the, they come into the house and you're cooking. Hey, what are you cooking? Mm -hmm. You might say, yes. Right, so that, you answer the question first, but then you don't want them to get their hopes up. So you feel like, what is the for you? You know, 
And then, but, and so, but if you were just sort of saying it, you've got flexibility. Right? Could go either way. And the yes means for? For. Right. So it's going to be, whatever you're doing, it's for that person. I'm sewing, I'm knitting socks for my son. Right? Achitis kachsane chikwan. Uh, and so the yes part just sort of says who it's for. And if it gets into some metaphorical thing, like we're working for our grandchildren, you usually add this word kage, kage yes. It becomes kage yes. Not exactly sure why, but that's a, that's a way that elders usually prefer if you're saying like, we're, we're going to fight for them, we're going to work for them, we're going to keep this language going for them. That's sort of a bigger sort of a metaphorical kind of a giving. Uh, and then in your sense you had my sister's family. And I change it because it would be complicated because it depends on if I'm oh. a male or female, right? Okay, right. And, but in ach is the word for family. So like you would say, I would say, ach glaub in ach yes chasa i, right? And then if you're, a f you, for a female, you'd say either ach kik in ach or ach shatch in ach, or you'd say ach in ach, uh, cooking for families. Okay, who wants to try this one? Cooking with a new pan. Where are we gonna find this? So if we go to uh, this dictionary, and we look for new, it pops up here. Uh, and so we can do a search on here. And it says yeast with a line after it. What does that line after it mean? It needs to be connected to something. Yeah, it means the noun comes after. Because adjectives are going to, some of them are going to come before. So uh, new pot, do we know how to say pot? Kasagi kanch would be the, the pot that people buy at their, the weed store. But we're talking about it. So I always feel self conscious when I make a cooking I put cooking pot in there. You know. But um, so how would we say new pot? Yes. And then to say old pot. Uh, well, it doesn't really work. It's a tagu, tagu, like an old beat up sort of thing. Uh, but an old person. So, for example, an, a young man is yis ka, an old man is ka shan. So, this is where you see the adjective is going to be on one side or the other. And there's a list. There's a list of ones that go before the noun, there's a list of ones that go after the noun. I am cooking with a new, oops. Pan. I guess pan's a little different. I put pot on there, so we're going to change that to pot. <laughs> and, and so, yes, this, this should say at, right? Good call. So, and it could go either way. Yes, at tin at chasai, at chasai, yes, at tin. It's totally flexible. There's no, um, you know, English sometimes has a preferred wor word order. I'm cooking with a new pan. Because otherwise you sound like you're trying to write a poem, like, with a new pan, I am cooking. <laughs> but clink it on so much, it, it doesn't, you, know, you do have those two chunks. Yis tin. So with that, atchasai. So those parts, yeah, and when they teach us in Hawaii, they use na, uh, they call him he, -e, the octopus. And they say it's a tentacle, and he could put it wherever he wants to. Right? And so this, is, to some degree, that's true in Klinkit as well. Okay. And the e instead of just kwasa e is... Could you explain that one more time? Sure. So for a different verb, I would say, um, I'm playing music in the kitchen. 
but the, that's without the object, right? We've, we're not dealing with the object. To deal with the object, we say, I'm playing the Radiohead's Creep in the kitchen, right? So you're specifying something, right? I'm cooking it. I'm cooking tacos. I'm cooking fish. I'm cooking pizza. Otherwise, I'm just cooking, okay. right? And so the, the example would be, and so we use these in English all the time, but we don't have to think about them, right? Because you could say, uh, who's cooking tonight? Right? So there's no object there. Who's, who's cooking half-dry salmon tonight? Now that's a different question, mm -hmm. right? And so when we specify the object, the ut goes away. Exactly. So there's examples. Like, I feel like I want to put it in when it's there instead of taking it away, so it's confusing. Right. But I'll do and so it, it kind of gets locked up. And, and there's two ways that a verb is going to do it. It's either going to add the ut, or it's going to it's going to change the classifier to a plus d. Okay. And so for achtla yes, I should have atchasei. I'm cooking for my mother. But it depends. right? It kind of depends. What are you doing? Cooking for my mother? Who are you cooking that for? So there's a that now. I'm cooking it for my mother. So in English we take care of it by using these specifying words. But in Tlingit it's taken care of by just what's going on in the object spot. Sometimes with the classifier. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll share a document with you guys. Let me let me find it first. Uh, there's a document that Das Jinni and Jok made, uh, Clink It in the Home. And let me find that one. And I'll share it with you guys because it's, uh, it's great. It's called Hayet Ki Yis. A whole bunch of phrases in here that are, that are for the home. And so, uh, backpack and pick up your backpack. A whole bunch of stuff thinking about what do, key, what do kids need to do and what do you need to say to kids, right? Uh, so let me do a search on here and we're going to find, maybe. Oh, there it is, sorry. So I did a search here for kitchen. So this is the word for kitchen. Ah, at gadus e ye. 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 So this is what you're gonna see. You're gonna see ah, the place. Some verb, and it could be a, a several words in there. Yeah. These two combine for the place where that verb happens. Right? Ooh, so it's like the place where cooking happens? Not necessarily cooking. That's it. But the place where people cook. That's all that's all it translates to. And so you're gonna have uh, a detki a diltiniye. That's the name of a, a, a daycare facility. So children the place they're watched, you know, the yeah, the ah uh, verb yeah. And sometimes this verb is going to have that relational suffix on there. Quite commonly will, but it doesn't all the time. Ah, at gadus e yeah. So as we study these, we start to see there's the verb. You can spot it right there. And then this gives you um, the name of a bunch of stuff that would be in there. Freezer, microwave, talk to, at gadus e kuk. I gotta go in here, and there's a few little tone things here and there, and I'm sure you could spot them. I could spot them. Um, not a big deal. Wait, atcha, akachtuchash ta, the board on which food is cut. Right, and so making words in Clinket is pretty straightforward. But you know, it's, it's a little bit harder if you don't have the vocabulary. But as we sort of start to use the language more, we'll keep going to speakers and saying, uh, how do you say this? How do you say that? So there's one on here that's pretty fun. This is a, this is a compound. So this is tea kettle. But what does that, what's the literal translation of that? Walk, 
Does anybody know? Yisakuke Dasoe. Oh, uh, this Shanaki. This list. It's a um, it's a newer document that's come out of Gold Belt Heritage Foundation, and I'll uh, I'll put it on our class website tonight. Just it, we got to go through this. Just a few tone things here and there that we'll fix. Anybody know what Isha is? Yisakuke. Bucket. Bucket. So the translation of a tea kettle is goose bucket. <laughs> so oh. it's pretty fun. And then oh. a, a jug is in Isha. In is a um, flint. So there's some that are just really kind of fun combinations. Is it a goose bucket because of the shape? Probably. It like, like it's a it's a bucket, bucket, but it's shaped kind of like a. Oh, I, mean, cool. I thought it was the sound. Because mm -hmm. goose mm -hmm. make kind of hissy sounds, don't they? I think so. If they get mad at you, they probably do. Uh, at, this is probably atcha. Atcha akadu Place where you stack up food. Um, Kita katsukwa yate. A katsukwa yate is a frying pan. And so whenever you see the yate, yate is yi plus at. So it means thing below. Thing below frying. Um, anyways, we have lots of fun with that. But we were looking for kitchen. So now that gets us back to there. I am cooking in the kitchen. Goodness. Gatus i ye. Because. Ah, at gatus i ye. So the at. I keep dropping the at in here. I'm going to add it there. I'm going to add it there. I'm going to add it there. And the ye is. So the ye. When, and so whenever we're going to do something at a place or during a certain time, it's usually going to get this X apostrophe suffix. Because that means to be located somewhere. And that includes time. So for example, talk, T, high-toned A, A, K, W, that's winter. In the winter would be talk. That's how you take care of that when you're putting sentences together. In the kitchen would be a at gadus i ye. So whenever you put a suffix onto ye, this short high one, it ends up going long and high. And this is where like ye day comes from. You'll see that word in some instances. Okay, I am cooking over a campfire. Is the verb different? Like not the verb, well yeah, the verb. It should be the same. So with this one we're going to get chesai or at chesai the whole time. A campfire is going to be Gun. Oh. G A N. No high tone. And high tone would be firewood, though. Yes. They are. <laughs> <laughs> certainly. And gun would also be just wood. So. But not, it's like wood that's fallen? Like if the tree was fallen? Usually, gun? yes. Okay. So. But you got gun da da goo goo. Just mm. pecks around the tree. So sometimes it's used a little bit interchangeable. We'll we'll see another one for like wooden, the one that we use for like wooden things. Gun or gun. But chasai. We kind of need one more word. Yeah, over. I'm looking. On. Is it? I 
Something is floor, and that something is the on part. Oh, yeah, it's over there. It's on our little poster. Okay, so let me pull that out because some folks in the room have that. So we're looking at a poster. Let's see. So shaki would be on top of the head of something. Is it kind of needs to be? So like we look at this box, and it's something to this box. So we have ka. Ka. So there's different ways that ka can appear. Cut, kah, kah, ka, uh, and it depends kind of on the context. So for this one, we're gonna say gun ka chasai. And that's probably gonna, I'll probably make that one long, like that. And then I would also make this to at as well. Because, I mean, it depends if you say, uh, where, how are you cooking that thing, right? Wasaisei. Gankachasei. I'm cooking it over a campfire. But someone says, what are you doing? Cooking over a campfire. Right, I'm cooking some hot dogs, I'm cooking some steaks, I'm cooking some hamburgers. So that's where we start thinking about whether or not there should be an object there. Are we specifying something or not? Because if it's just a whole bunch of things, then you just you just lock it up with that at part. Okay. And then it should be at here and a at at here. So if we were going to say I'm cooking on the stove. Then from your list of other words, we would just put um, the word for stove instead of gun. Mm -hmm. So, and then we could say, uh, oops, where is it? Here's stuch or stuch, whatever you prefer. Uh, that one should be high tone. I think it's usually high tone. So if that's stove, how would I say uh, I am cooking red snapper on the stove. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Can we go back to the thing? Okay, so now there's stuch. Oops, there's something else. Is it that clef? Or let's click. Clef. 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 Um, gun. Car. Wait, where were where were we cooking? Oh, clef. Click. Well, so the at goes away because oh. now we've got chef. And the preference oh, here okay. would be to keep that thing with the verb because oh. most people are going to understand. But it, you'd be sort of like saying uh, sto stove, uh, or you'd say like red snapper, I'm cooking stove, right? Or like, stove, I'm cooking red snap, right? So we want to make sure, stukka chlep chasei, or chlep chasei stukka. So what if you're baking it? Wait, can we finish the, the first time? Oh, sure. <laughs> so what happened, what happened here is the ut becomes, you can do it for me? No. This would become chet, and then this would become stuch. Stuch ka chet chasei. And the ut goes away. Yep. That makes sense. So the ut is a placeholder. Otherwise, it's just it, right? And so the other thing here is, I don't think we really have a verb for baking, but you would say stuch tuch. Now it's inside. Now it's inside. That's it's all you do. Right. And where do you put the tuch? The tuch is the ka can be that's where the directional is, right? Tuch. You could say tai 
but then someone would say, Sun can work like that. You put it underneath the stove, right? Cooking it under the stove, like that's not how you cook. This is so helpful. Okay, okay. So here's a few kind of different ones. Uh, so you're cooking, you're cooking it. Are you cooking rice? What are you cooking? What are you cooking in addition to rice? Who are you cooking for? What are you cooking with? Okay. Anybody want to try? You are cooking. So you are cooking. So again, there's that when when the it is in there, it's always you know. Is there something there, or are you just sort of doing it, right? So now, you are cooking it. Is a e. Yeah, why? But is a e. Is a e. Well, see, there's a few verbs where this kind of matters, right? There's some of them where they're always pretty much it. It's just, it's just how it goes, right? And so, like, there's some of them, like you could say, you're dancing. But I think if you were to say a name, like jitterbug, <laughs> so you say, Aw, you say, I am dancing. Jitterbug. I'm dancing the jitterbug. So that, but that one's kind of a different thing. So made it more complicated. Okay. Are you cooking rice? Anybody online want to try this one? Anybody in the room want to try this one? Good. But the age should come yeah, after the ku, though. It's okay. the only thing, right? I wasn't sure age right. was the right one. So yes, ge like. or age, right? Ku age is e. Are you cooking rice? And we have to remember if this if this verb ended with a low tone. We wouldn't turn, you know, we're not turn. Kuchage is a e, right? We don't <laughs> do that. that. Kuchage is a e, right? Well, it is high tone at the end, so. You okay? You okay? What are you cooking? Washa is a e. Dasa is a e, right? So this is forming the questions using these things that we know. Already, and so yak echa, yak echa, dasa isi. So this is again how we can contribute to conversations. These are household things that we could be talking about. What are you cooking in addition to rice? Right, because like, what if I like rice? Ain't gonna be enough. I say you came home. Dasa is a e. Kuh. Um, ha. Dasa is a e. Ka. <laughs> ka. Yeah. So ka, ka is like if you're and, right? Because you could say, you could say ka dasa, right? Like and dasa. what? Dasa. But I'm looking for the in addition to, which we'll have to sort of go searching for so we can go back to our dictionary and addition would be the word we're looking for. So not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. Oh. Right? A 
along with, in addition to, to the side of, besides. So this can work with like, you see somebody walking along with someone else. They're beside each other. Who's walking beside my brother? That's how you could use that. You could use it when you're pairing two verbs together. Right? We saw this in one of that in that little book. So you could say, away. My brother is walking along and in addition he's throwing rocks. Right? So kiknach. Right? And then we see the long dash before it, that means there's something else there, right? Kuch kiknach. something something chasai. What are you cooking in addition to rice? Kuch kichnach age isai isai. Dasa isai we kuch kichnach. What are you cooking? in addition to the rice. So it's just mm. combining two little parts, right? You could say, uh, for, or if you looked in there, for example, and you saw that it wasn't just rice, but there's something in the rice, dasa isi we kuch among the rice, with the rice, right? So there's different ways to do that. We're really just learning how to use these uh, postpositional things right here in addition. Kiknach, ka, and chank. Um, what's the way? With with kuch. Oh, that. That. Okay. It's just over there. It's just over, it, it just creates a little bit of separation. Dasa isi i kuch kiknach. You could say that, but the we just sort of. It's like a. Okay. With that, you just sort of allows you to kind of point a little bit of attention towards it. And there are cases like ya, so if the rice is, if I'm holding it, dasa isi ya kuch kiknach, what are you going to cook along with this rice? Who are you cooking for? You said this earlier, and I don't remember. All I can think of now is the scene in Austin Powers where he says, Who does number two work for? <laughs> Who are you <laughs> cooking for? What is the for part? Remember that? Yes. Yes. Mm. What is the who part? I keep wanting to say gusu, but that's where. Where? So. Adusa. Adusa, right? So, one of the things that we typically have is if we have one of these, th like if you say, uh, G, right? G wu, ach G wu, adu G wu sa we, right? Or adusa, du G wu. There's different ways to say it. But in this case, to say who for, you'd usually say, I do yes so way, right? I do yes so way is a e. Right? And so there are there's certain times when there's things that go in between the initial question marker and the sa or the sa we. And as we talked about saya and sa we usually sound better, not all the time, but often, you know, it's, you just get an ear for it, you know, and this is what the, the speakers say. What are you cooking with? <laughs> I'm cooking with gas. <laughs> What 
Is it Dasa Issa Yi Tin? Dot in Sawe Issa Yi, which is the same thing, mm. but just the word order, right? Because the T, the Tin is like. The, it needs to belong to something. Mm -hmm. And it can actually attach itself to the dot, right? And so this is when da becomes dot, is when there's something that comes after it that belongs to it. Da sa, dot in sa, dot yanach sa. So like dot in sa, what with? Dot yanach sa, what's more, what's more than it? Dot kin sa we, what's less than it? Um, a do in sa we, with who? A do yis away for who? A do jeets away in whose possession? Right. And so this is how we see these things. They have to belong to something. Yis, in, jeet, but they can belong to those question markers like that. The da and the adu. Okay. Any questions? So the in. In is ten. Is ten. Ten teen in. It's the same. They're interchangeable. Mm -hmm. okay. If the word before it ends with a consonant, in usually sounds better. Okay. So it's like the T and Tim goes to da. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was supposed to be helpful, not make it worse. I'll just take your word for it. <laughs> It'll, I'll get there. I'm sorry. So you'd say achtla tin, usually, right? Just because it ends with a vowel. And so just because it just sounds a little better. Ach ish in. Ach ish in. Ah, but you can say ach ish tin. And it's one if of those you said ones. Tin, would people understand what you meant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's some speakers who prefer certain ones. I don't know if that's an actual pattern thing. I know you say whoosh in, and you, you say whoosh tin, whoosh in. And both of those, whoosh and whoosh are the same, tin and in are the same. Okay. So it's just a preference thing. But it seems to me, following a consonant, yin is better. Following a vowel, tin is better. Tin and teen is just your choice. Following consonant, tin is better. Or following consonant, yin is better. Yep. And then, let's see. The yaw tisqeen, du tundatani awtlayech akshe. Somebody made their thoughts. Ikusha. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, t if you're asking about like making up your mind or something. Um, usually there's there's a verb specifically for that. I'm not sure if that's what, what you're asking. Um, but you can say for like making language. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I see now. Yeah, yeah, this was from, and so this, uh, well, the first one, this slideshow we developed where we're trying to translate these things. Uh, Anna Hook had an idea of some exercises that might help us to sort of think about how to use these things. We just crammed a whole bunch of drills. Those verb drills at the end of beginning clinket are great, but you run through so many that sometimes it's a challenge to retain them. So we're going through them and thinking of some different ways to use that verb in the same way. We also were looking at a couple of documents. Uh, this is a dictionary. Uh, it's still a draft. It's kind of clunky, but it's highly usable, I think, still, that I've been working on for a few years. Uh, you get it at clinketlanguage.com under the dictionary tab. Uh, it's searchable. Uh, this was a verbal structure handbook, which you could find at clinketlanguage.com under resources, print and web. And then the other one, I haven't put this one up yet. This is a clink it in the home kind of handbook that was made by uh, Das Jenny, Mary Folletti, and Jock Alice Taff. 
And uh, yeah, I'll put that one. I'll put that one up tonight. That one's not on. Excuse me, the website, but I'll put it up tonight. And then uh, we'll go through. There's some little spelling errors in there, but nothing major. It's all really easy to, to fix. Okay, we'll do this one. Then we'll take our break. So again, we think about that object thing, the ut, and what it does for, for these verbs in, in particular, for locking up that object space. So, he is drinking. And this, this would often be interpreted as like, you know, going on a bender or, you know, drinking alcohol. It starts with do. No. Dana. 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 Right. So we get atana. So the do when we're using verbs would be mm. it would have to either be a possessive for like he's drinking his coffee or he's drinking his his beer. Um, or it would have to be like people are drinking. Atuna would be people are drinking. He is drinking it. Now it could be anything. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with drinking alcohol or beer. That's just, that's just the way that this thing is constructed. It's the way it works. Anyone want to take a shot that he's drinking it? because there's a third person. So if there's a third person, you're going to end up with, so we're going to have na as the root. We're going to have da as the classifier. We're going to have zero as the subject. And if there's a third person object and a third person subject, it must be the letter A. So the na. He is drinking it. So we know that there's a, there's a he or she there, and then there's also a third person, because there's an it there. So this is the one you'd use for if you're ever specifying apple juice, orange juice, water, beer, whatever. Now it has to go to a dinner. Okay. He is drinking water with a wooden cup. So in English, you'd say from but I think it's a little easier to say with in this case. So. And I'll, I'll show you guys the wooden part. I think it could be gun, but uh, to get wooden, not that. This is the wooden, uh, that's how I think you'd say wooden. would be a shuwu, and shuwu means it's like a piece of wood that's going to be made into something. That's how I think that works. Um, so would it be shuwu gukha? Yep. Shuwu gukha would be a wooden cup. So heen adana um or would you put the would you put it could go either way, way, but I'd probably say heen adana and then you should probably have a we in there. Oh right, right, right. Weh. 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 There's one more word. With. Oh ten. <laughs> oh, I guess I didn't put the way in there. Hin adana to wugu katin. I guess it doesn't mean that. Okay. Mm. Why is tin at the end? Because the tin will always go after mm. what it's with. 
okay. right? Because otherwise it's just floating out there. It, it would be like sort of saying, uh, he's putting on its table, right? So it has to go on the table. And so this is the same thing. It has to come immediately after. Because otherwise it's like, it just doesn't make sense. So tin goes immediately after the thing it's with. Yes. And then there's a whole bunch of verbs you can use this kind of thing with. You could say, um, acha tin, uh, acha tin shawachich, uh, she or he clubbed them with a paddle. Right? And so if you need to specify, <laughs> <laughs> he killed him with a pencil, right? So that tin could be used for in lots of different ways with, with these types of sentences, right? And it can go on either side of the verb. It doesn't. It doesn't particularly. What the way you keep it in mind is the most important information always goes first. Like it loves to front load, right? Because otherwise, you know, killing someone with a pencil, the pencil probably comes first. <laughs> <laughs> Because it depends, right? Because if we're shocked that he actually killed somebody, ha, our jack, kuhida tin. Then we're like, what? Kuhida tin. Yeah, so. Anyways. If you were going to add we to that, you would, after it, you would add it after the adana. Yeah. Hin adana. We. Adana. gan tin. Yeah, we. He is drinking. Too much alcohol today. Kudach. Kudach. Yaniki. Yep. So you've got all the parts in there, and the, and the part. This one, they're, I think they're pretty flexible, right? So I've got it. Kudach now atana yaniki. Now, you could say kudakh adana we now ya yaki now kudakh adana ya yaki ya yaki kudakh now adana and so there's and basically this is a, a similar type of thing that kudakh now is too much alcohol but kudakh adana drinking it too much it, it works either way either way it really works And then you could say, someone else could say, hmm, Gao Dan Shi Di Tai Yi Maybe he's under the horse's tail. <laughs> Which is the, so they'd say when someone was too intoxicated. Okay, I think I need to adjust the way I said this one, because I just remembered something. Well, I wouldn't that, I think, I, I think uh, when I was thinking about this, I was trying not to have two verbs, but mm -hmm. wouldn't that one have two verbs, or is there a way of referring to death that isn't really a verb? It's more of like... It, it would, and so um, I want to put this there. Okay, and so uh, when I first thought of it, so kodach now adana dushat wuna yi jidach. And so the jidach part is really interesting because the jidach could be a... Really, we're making this verb into a noun. Right, Dushat Wuna would be his wife died. Dushat Wuna Yi Ji Dach. The Ji Dach means like it literally, that's the thing that gave it to him. So there's all kinds of things you could put in here. You could say, I'm tired from working. I'm tired from walking. So the jidach means like it can attach to sort of a verbal phrase type of thing. I learned this working with kahuanish because we were saying something like that, like the the work made him tired or, or the something made him or her tired. And so for something to make them do that, that jidach is sort of a little bit of a sort of a causative type of thing. Dushat wu na yi jidach kodach nao atana. And your word order is going to depend, right? So like what I'm telling you here is he's drinking too much and this is the reason why. 
But I might also tell you his wife died and that's the reason why he's drinking so much. So there's two different things that I'm communicating there by word order. One is I'm judging him for drinking too much, the first way. He's drinking too much because his wife died. His wife died and that's why he's drinking so much. That way I'm sort of letting you, I'm, I'm creating a reason, right? I'm, I'm using a load of compassion maybe. Less judgmental. Right? And so the same with this. That's the most important thing. He's drinking too much. Or if I said, And then there's other ways I could say it too. And that's tying it together with some other grammar. His wife died. Because of that, he's drinking too much. Right? So that again, just like in English, there's lots of different ways you could say it. There's these sort of constructions, uh, and the jidach thing is, is a really neat way to sort of tie two things together, right? From studying Klinkit, my head is just really full, but I'm happy about it. Okay. What is he drinking now? <laughs> it's hard to know, you know. I'm going to make these sound really judgmental. What is he drinking now? <laughs> but it could just be like, what's he drinking now? Right? It doesn't have to be all judgmental. Wasa atana? So like, wasa atana would be like, how is he drinking it? Right? So the wasa is going to push us into the how mode. Because then I might say, just regular, or you know, like through a straw. I don't know. <laughs> but but it, it could be you know, in other cases, you know, you'd say, How are you going to build this table? And now I'm getting into like the, the process of it. But in, instead, you know, we want to say, dasa. So, dasa is going to push us into the what? No. So, did we have? What is he drinking? Dasa at the Nagi Dat. Dasa at the Nagi Dat. Okay. Who is he drinking with? And, you know, there's the word order could change for that one too. You did the way Dasa at the Dasa at the so dasa adana yidat is sort of like, what is he drinking now? Yidat dawe dasa adana. Like he was drinking something else. Now what is he drinking? Right? Who is he drinking with? Did you do that? Adu yis sawe again? Who is he drinking for? Oh, for. Oh, okay. With uh, tea? <laughs> but you put it in the middle? Adu in sawe, right? Adu in sawe. Now this is one. I do tin so weird. That doesn't sound right to me. Okay. So I don't know. It's not like a vowel thing. It's not but a straight vowel. But practicing vowel. and seeing, it's sort of the same. But like, mm -hmm. how you're putting it between those two things when you're talking about who, like that, really helps. Where we're doing it with a different verb and kind of a different context um, to see it repeated. So because mm -hmm. sometimes it seems like there's so many random things that we'll never get it. Right. <laughs> the book of variables and the book of exceptions. Right? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay. All right. Last one. Then we'll, we'll take a break. He's drinking water with his paternal aunt. Isiku get paternal aunt. Mm. Art. 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 Yeah, away. Do art. Mm -hmm. There's one part. He's drinking water. Heen. Adu. Heen. Heen. The verb. 
Ajuna. Ajuna. I don't know where Ajuna came from. That's who. Right? Yeah. Heen Ajuna Tin. Those are the parts. Okay. So how are we going to put them together? So we've got tin or een. Yeah. Duat heen adana. The thing I'm confused about is is tin yin in this part because it's following duat adana. Because he's. I think it's tin. Yeah. But I think it could be in. Hin at the not do at in. Do at tin. I was putting it in the wrong place. I was putting See, it in the wrong place. See, that's a consonant too. You said in. Because at in sounds too much like a word. I think that's what. I don't know. I can't. I was putting it there's, there's something there. There's, a, there's probably like some, one of these super flow charts of whether it should be teen or in or tin. I don't know. 20 different I, rules. I, all I know is it's one of those things. And, and so this is interesting, right? Because even I thought I knew English pretty well. And then I had a, a student, I think she was Korean, <coughs> and I was tutoring English. And she sat down. I was like, you got a paper? You know, want me to help you with your paper? She said, no, I just got a question. I said, all right, go ahead. She said, when do you use the... When do you use A or N? And I was like, oh, I got this. And she said, and when do you use nothing? And I was like, I don't got it. <laughs> I started talking. I was like, you just know. <laughs> so it's just one of those things, right? Okay. Take five. Come back. We got one more slide. We might do one more of these. These are fun. It's very We'll do this one, then we'll do some talk uh, stuff, and then we'll just talk about what other sort of things might help you at this point. At this point, you're starting to get good enough that you could identify things that you need that help fill in some of the blanks. So, uh, I am sitting. And this isn't the act of sitting, like I am sitting down. It's sort of I am seated. Right? Is that the ha -a? Yes. Ha -a. Ha -a. Oops. Ha -a. Ha -a. Ha -a. Ha -a. Ha -a. I am sitting on the floor. Haaka? No. You were close. Say it again. Haaka. So ka, so ka is going to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't know what goes after. <laughs> after or before it, because I don't think that sounds... Like it's just like you're on top of it, but so, yes. Yeah, so there's don't know the word for floor. <laughs> there's a word for floor. So there's oh, a word for the, board. Uh, uh, ka. Yep. So a board is ah, uh, uh, long and high. Ah uh, ka, on the board is the floor. Ah uh, ya, face of the board is the wall. Ah uh, ya, ah uh, ka. Um, and so as we start to see how these things get put together. We should, we should recognize I guess I can just write it here so you all can see it. probably see that easier. So I'll put some text in here. So when we see uh, ka, one thing that we should be able to recognize is that the ka is that on part, right? So we don't have to do it twice. Yes, yeah, so we don't have to say ta ka ka. You just and then the other thing is suffixes work really well in clinket. They just there's certain things like to be seated somewhere or to be, you know. So I could say um, towards the floor might be what. Towards. Nah, nah. Towards. Nah. Towards. Nah. Towards. 
What is towards? Huh? Day. Yes. Takade. Towards the floor. Mm. Away from the floor. Describing Right? So this is the ka. And so just like any other ka, we're going to see how that works. Takat. Takach. Takach. So we'll see suffixes can be on there. And so to be seated on the floor, takach would mean we're kind of moving around or repeatedly. Takat could work. But it kind of means like I had arrived here. But I think the one that works kind of best for I am sitting on the floor is going to be our one. So I am seated on the floor. Oh, I guess I put cut. Okay, fine. A cut ha'a or a kach ha'a. You got your choice. And you could also say a ka ha'a. But I don't, I don't think that one works really as well. Because the ka is in there, I think it's going to want a suffix to be put on there. A cut a kach. I am sitting near a large table. So when you're near people, anybody know how to be near people? So when you're near people, you are, I'm going to grab this up. So to be near people, it's going to be but that works best for people and living things. For other things, and it could include people, there's two one. Two one means next to, beside something. Right? Khan is also beside something. But I think khan tends to work better with living creatures. So we'll use two one to be beside. And there's going to be other ways that we could say this, too. What is a large table? Plain nadaf. Nadaf plain. Yeah, away. So plain is one of those ones <laughs> has to come after. Cake plain. Nadaf plain. Card plain. Card plain. Right? Why for wooden spoon did the, did it, did the wooden come before gulcha? Oh, because that's just to say wooden, it's not really an adjective. It's just saying putting two things together. So you could say, Qayyiz is iron, Gao is drum, Qayyiz Gao. So it's like the type of thing and then that. So that's how to make something into basically an adjective, it comes first. But if you're, but if you're saying big, small, hot. Because that's an actual adjective. It has to come after. To say hot, it would have to be a verb that gets turned into an adjective. When verbs get turned into an adjective, they basically get a the suffix on it, which is I or U or YI or WU, then the noun. Yakei ka, good person. Yatai cake. Hot dog. All of the elders, they hated it because we'd say, get all your cage for hot dog. But they didn't like that because it was just too strange for them. But get heen, hot water. Sa'ati heen, cold water. Right? So verbs can become adjectives. But then there are, there's a short list of them, but there is a list of true adjectives. Uh, there's two places you could find them. Uh, James has them in his verbal structure handbook. If we go uh, up a ways. And then he's got a list of them right here. So these are the ones that come before. These are the ones that come after. So we see plain right there. So it has to come after. Uh, there's another spot um, in how Hayuk Atangi. I've got them under modifying nouns. 
So these are all ones that come before. Ake is good. Ake ish. Good father. That's a shukach adi name. Atlein ketietki. Lots of puppies. Chago ka. That person from long ago. Gwach took tash. Shorts. Because they're pants that are too short. Gwach could be like a rapper too, I guess. Kasayeyihin, strange water. Katsukhu, saknein, toast, toasted bread. Wait, where's that? Right here at the top. I was wondering about that. So I'm just adding, I'm adding nouns. Kinda tukin yeh, butt up is what that means. Kinda is upwards, tuk is a butt. <laughs> upside down raven. Kuwat acha, long paddle. Kadzisk, bull moose. Kudach, uh, I can never think of a good example. Kudach gah, it's just too much of a duck, right? Kunach singit, a true singit. Kustin na. A gigantic octopus. Klingit <laughs> shak. Klingit strawberries. Sheech uwakan. A doe. Shkahadi, shkahadi ka. Crazy person. Uh, let's see. Shugu kuk. The first book that was ever made. Tatgei atcha, food from yesterday. Tekate, a stone dog. Taguyak, a, a, a boat that was from like hundreds of years ago that's all grown over with moss. Could you tell us the order of if you wanted to say a small or a big stone dog? You can't really stack these. So then you would, I guess you could say tekech claim, maybe. But you, I, I would use a verb for it, for one of them. I think you should only use one adjective per noun and, and think it. I might be wrong, but I think that's the way it probably goes. So I would say yegeyi. Or big, te cake, but the yegei part uh, has to be used for a non-living thing, because it would be shigei would be the living thing, because there's a classifier change. Good boy. Okay. So just just go one at a time with these. A tak shabat, the pure woman. Uh, and this, okay. Eka atcha, true food. Yadachun ka, the person who's very honest. Yis gao, a new drum. Um, for true, would that could that be like a true story? Yeah. Eka shkashnik aya. But there's a, there's a couple of these like eka ka, that means someone who's been in a warrior. Mm. Like a combat veteran, especially. Uh, and then these ones come after. So we could say, Sha uh, Kashle, a fine looking mountain. Watsikh Katsku, a teenage adolescent caribou. Klait uh, Kwat. A ball, an egg-shaped uh, mound of snow. Kate <laughs> caught a, or I guess sapnein caught might be better. Flatbread. We don't want to make the dog flat. Shek uh, <laughs> would be something that is bendable. Shek kayestiki, like a bendable cable. 
Sauk means this is it's going to become this thing. So a really good example for that would be Dushat Sauk, his fiance. She's going to become his wife. Yesh Sauk is the name of some of these old stories, like because he was going to become Yesh. Uh, Dushan, old cat. Keshish uh, Shitsk. Green wood, so alder that's uh, very young, and it's still green and really bendable. Uh, could also apply, you know, like you could say, I think, <laughs> raw uh, fish flesh. Uh, tate Well, this works. The tate part, yeah, cage tate would be like a a chubby dog. <laughs> Got mm. tooch, fresh fish. Uh, let's see. Teeth, teeth. So, like rigid shoes, I guess. Yak plane, big boat. Yak tank, big boats. Uh, it looks like a, something that looks like a shark. A mm. hook, dried meat. Nadauk uh, yeti, a tiny table. Achshat yi yi, my ex-wife. So the yi yi would be like, it's formerly that, it used to be that. And then yes would be, there's not too many things that are that, but chalk yes, those discolored gold, those eagles before they're, they're immature. Okay, so there's our list of adjectives, right? There's not that many in Klinka, but you can make things into other adjectives by sometimes pairing them together. Qayes is uh, metal, and so there's all kinds of metal things. Qayes tich is a metal rope. So that's a cable. Kaigei skao is a metal uh, drum. That's a bell. I am sitting near a large table. We're going to use to one as our post positional. We're going to use nadank plane for our big table. And then ha'a. Anybody want to put it together? Anybody online want to put that together? There, I gave you all the parts. Okay. We just got to get that 2 1 in there. So, Nadok, Klein, 2 1, Ha'a. Right, and so now that we've got this, so what about I'm sitting on the big a uh, big table? Nadauk tlein kat I'm sitting under a big table. Nadauk tlein tayi right? So now we can start seeing how these directionals work as well. Like this next one. <laughs> I'm sitting at the base of a hill. No. Gooch is hill. Gooch is hill. Goo gooey? Is that the base of or is that? Gooey would be like the Gooch butt gooey. end of something. Oh. Mm. So you couldn't be at the butt end of a hill? Yeah, not really. Okay. It would be like a... <laughs> That would be like a rifle. It has like a butt end of it, right? But this one has more to do with being situated. It's the same word for a tree trunk. It's the same word for the base of your spine. Anybody know it? Tree trunk, base of the hill, base of the spine. Got all those in here, but there's so many. So there's a place in downtown Juneau 
which translates to river at the base of the flounder. So the first part, so flounder, anybody know flounder? Zanti, Hini, what's in the middle? Zanti, Hini, Ke, Ke, K apostrophe high tone I. So this Ke is the base of a hill, the trunk of a tree, and the, the place where your spine meets the, the sort of uh, your hips, I guess. And it's a, a good way to remember the Ke part is a clinket word for young boys, like some, uh, several young boys, is kesani, and that means little tree trunks. <laughs> <laughs> Nora, she said, they're all spine. So now, okay, so we've got gooch, ke, cha'a. Gooch, ke, cha'a. And so the ke, uh, that doesn't need any sort of suffix on it. Because it's just it's just pretty specific as it is. I am sitting under an old spruce tree. So there's a couple of things too with with this one, uh, and this was a neat suggestion because we we should be able to do old spruce tree by now, <laughs> since I just showed you five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> and of course we went over this table, so you memorize all. But to say under a tree is a little bit different because a tree gives you shelter. So because it gives you shelter, there's two ways to say under a tree. Say ye or just say ye. Either one is fine. But that's a special thing and so that's how you have to sit under a tree because you're not, it's not under it in the same way you would be under other things like a table. So something Say ha How do we say? Shay ye. An old. An old we just looked at this. We did, but, but, but there's but two ways to okay. say it. Well, actually, there's probably three. I would I would nail it, narrow it down to two. I would probably use the one that like an old person. I think of trees like people, I guess. So we go back to our list. We go up. We see old or elderly right there. So Sean. Shay Sean. Say ye. You're almost like a seashell, she That does have a cool. Shay Yishan, Say Yicha. Sounds very musical. And you could say, Ah, Gooch. Ah, Gooch. Ah, And you could say, Ah, Gooch. Ah, Gooch. If you're saying, like, this tree is like hundreds and hundreds of years old. So it depends. There's two ways, I think, to say it. Okay, Ultra Mega Super Bonus question. The last one. I am sitting in the sunshine. You know, Audagon is in sunshine, isn't it? Say it again. Audagon. Audagon is it is sun shining outside. That's the weather. Mm -hmm. So it's not part of sunshine. It's kind of related, but we're gonna do something different. <laughs> we have talked uh, about uh, this. Too long. <laughs> yeah, so Audagon would be like it's sun shining outside. So that it's different because you'd say Audagani Gandigachtuad. When it's sun shining, we're going to go outside. So it's more like the weather, like it's sunny outside. Right? Sun shining. So what is the word for sun? Gakan, gonna cheese. Gakan, and the the gan part is we see it in audagan, and we'll see it in other things. It's from the verb root gan, which means to burn. Gakan. So if we have the sunshine, this is this stuff is pretty fun. 
So here's the sun, and this is the same for any light, whether it's the moon or a lamp. Like, let's say it's kind of foggy out, or it's kind of this dust in the air, and you can see this ray of light. A ray of light is called, whatever it is, Kus. Like it's a foot. Yes, I remember yes. that. <laughs> okay. So that is a that's a beam of light, just generally speaking. Like for example, if it's a full moon and it's kind of there's it's a little bit there's some uh, let's say there's some ice crystals in the air and we can see that moonbeam shining through these trees. Dis ooze. We're talking about that moonbeam. Now, if the sun is shining and there are some clouds, and then you know, like you look out and you see these sunbeams coming down where they're to the land, the sunbeam like that that comes through the clouds is called chusyi. And so this is combining a couple of words. Chus is foot or leg. Yi is below, mm -hmm. below the foot of the sun. That's what you call it when you see those sun you know, breaking through the clouds kind of in the distance. Well, of course it's in the distance, it's the sun. <laughs> Let's see when you see it. Okay. Now the third way that this works, let's say the sun is shining and in this patch of sun, it's on the ground, light, lighting up a surface, and you see like a little bunny in there. <laughs> to be in that, to where the sun, where the light illuminates a surface, this is called This is such cool stuff, right? So chus is the beam of light. Chus yi is that beam of light that kind of breaks through the clouds. Chus yi ti. Because you know, we're talking about it's coming down and touching the surface, but that place where it illuminates the surface is a footprint. Mm. So okay. is it chus yi ti? Kagan, Kus, E. Tik, Kha. I'm sitting oh, in the, the sun. The of the sun. Okay. Right, because if you're sitting in it, you have to be in that place where it's illuminated by it, kind of. That's very beautiful. Right. Sitting in, but it's a little different, right? Because it has to be in that beam. If it's just sun shining and you're just sitting there, you would probably say, Audagan, I'm just sitting around, right? But to be located, you know, like it's shining through, it's illuminating, and you could, you could be the bunny. Go ahead, be the bunny. Before we move on, could we do one more thing? Sure. Which is just take one of these sentences, and instead of I am like sitting near a large table, or I'm sitting on the floor, just say, I sat on the floor, or I was sitting near a table. Oh, okay. Just make it past, just make We'd it We'd have to use a different verb. Really? Because this is, this is what we call a positional verb. It only exists in this, in this way. Okay. Right. So we'd, we'd have to, because you wouldn't, there would be other verbs that you could do that with. You could do that with the cooking, way easy. I cooked but, this. Yeah. So we, we can go back to cooking, and we could do one for that. Um, and so this is the thing, so you've got like uh, the act of sitting as opposed to, you know, I sat down, mm -hmm. but I was sitting there. It, it gets a little more complicated. Okay. So, so let's duplicate this one. I cooked. What do you think? <laughs> well, we probably haven't done this yet. <laughs> Since I haven't taught I you what has to happen, okay? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what has to happen. 
two things have to be added to this. And so I'll show you the, I'll show you the example on where to find the answer. So if we go to um, our Clinkit Verbs website, and we go for, and you know, we could do this, we say cook, and we get E, and then there's to cook, and then to cook it. So we'll just look at this one. Here's the imperfective, which we've been using, which means I'm doing it now, or I do it regularly. We're looking for the perfective, right? So when we say chwasa'i, so there's a couple things that happen here, right? So as we look at the difference, so let me just sort of put them side by side. And you tell me what's different here. The H is like, or the H, that's not the letter I'm thinking of. <laughs> that's okay. The X and the A in the first one and the X in the second one is like to signify chat, which is first person. Yeah, right? so the chat is there. So what, what we're going to do is in between, right after the, actually right before the chat, we get this guy. Mm. This is what we call the perfective marker. What the perfective marker does is it says, we're going to look at this verb in terms of whether or not it has happened. So now we can say has happened, hasn't happened. It's not dealing with tense or time at all. It's just saying that's how we're going to look at it. Okay. So then there's one more, there's one more step. There's one more thing that changes here. What's the other thing that changes? What is the uh, verb root? Is it sa or e? E. It's okay. e. But right before that, there's something that's a little different. The w. <laughs> I'm just right like thinking right, what, what comes right before the e? I oh. of a. Right? So this, <laughs> if a classifier goes plus i, that means you are marking that it, it, it indeed has happened, right? Plus I means it has happened. So all your state verbs have to be plus I if they're going to be positive, right? Yuck A. It has to be yuck because it, that's how it is. Chit seen. It has to be chit because that's how it is. Yanik. It has to be ya because that's how it is. So now we're, we're having the classifier discussion. So as we have that sort of discussion, we look at the classifier is a complicated thing, but it's really not. I mean, all it really does is in terms of the plus i, minus i, is it says whether or not it has happened. Right? That's really all that it's doing. So if we look here, we're going to have we went from sa to si. Because you might be cooking now, but it's still going on. So all the action verbs, if they're happening right now, they will be minus i. That's just ha that's how they are. But once we get to the perfective, if they did happen, they'll go plus i. Okay. So the ya um, in the plus i becomes the w? No, the ya stays, it stays the ya. Oh, so can we go back to the sentence and just write? Because this one has, so chwasa'i. So that's what we're going to get, this chwasa'i. But where's the Oops, ya? I am cooked. <laughs> that's why I say I am baked. <laughs> okay, I cooked. There we I go. Cooked. Okay, so I, I just don't understand what happened to the, what changed because of the ya. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, sure. So what we get here is we get a little bit of clinket math. So y plus ch plus si equals chwasi. This is how this is how it works. So the perfective comes before the subject, and then the classifier comes after the subject. But the y plus the ch, you end up with chwa every time. It jumps over it, is what happens.
but it appears right there and we know that it does. So because it's you like that, is that why it's W because that sort of, that character isn't really used before? I feel like you mentioned that, that it, um, that you with the two dots over mm -hmm. it used to be used pretty frequently. Yes. And then it fell out and it was replaced by W. Yeah, so a long time ago this might have been something sense. like, and so it's going to become a W, it'll become a W almost every time. Mm. But there is one case where it will stay a Y. Which we don't know about ever. <laughs> no, that's when you do it. Oh. When you do it. This is why you say, mm. Yisaku, because you know it. Mm. And, and so we have to think about time differently too, because things like, Khwaseku, it has to be Khwaseku, because you have to know it in order to know it. Before we go to you, could because mm -hmm. I kind of hate you right now. Um, could we do... Success. Could we do I cooked it just because I want to oh, see... Oh, sure. Is it going to be just quasi-e-e? Quasi. Oh, is it quasi-e? Yep. And oh, then, yes. so, so then for you cooked fish, it would be the same quasi-e? Yeah. Okay, and then on, on down the line. Yep. So then you're saying if you change it to, to, to the... U instead of I, that's when it, do, it doesn't turn into a W. It turns to Yeah, so, so for that one, so we've got Hwesa E, so let me get rid of all these things because we're not too worried about that. But, oh, oh, but you're, oh, we could do those. We could do those. No, I'm too. just saying you're going to post this later, right? Yeah. With all do you have the original? Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh. And, and we, we <laughs> duplicate it. We duplicate. I always duplicate <laughs> before I delete. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Duplicate, delete. I took good notes, but not So yeah, no, no, no original work has been okay. taken now. Okay. Damage. So this, this is where it gets sneaky. If it's, if it's making you hate everything, don't worry about it because <laughs> it does. There, there, there reaches a point where it does make sense. Okay. Right. Okay. So we got the you ha sit, and people hate. Some, some people don't like to see this, but that's what's under the hood. That's how you yeah. get at i and then you get chwasei. And for some people, they don't care what the components are. They can actually just memorize all these different sort of things. So, if that's what Clinkit math gives us, what do you think we get when we get ya, e, se? So this is how we're going to do you, right? And and so you cooked. We're going to actually add the uh, the ut out here, right? So we can't forget that. So Ilsa would now, so that, so what, what we're going to get, uh, let's jump ahead here a little bit. So this one's going to give us zero, I, uh, whoops, sorry, mm. perfective, se. And this is going to be really important because if I say Ilsa, the, oops, I forgot the letter I, hold on. <laughs> So the I is the U part, right? Mm -hmm. It is also the U for like, it happened to you. Mm -hmm. So if you got cooked, you go where the zero is. <laughs> and if you go before the perfective marker, you get ew, ew se. Ew se e would be, you were cooked. <laughs> right? And so now we're in the afterlife and I'm like, ew se e, e Sean, right? But if it comes after the perfective marker, that means it's the subject. Mm -hmm. That means it's the subject. So, yeah. for example, yisiku. That's the prefix right there. Yisiku, right? To, you know it. You know it. Okay. Yisik. <laughs> Shit. That's what you're gonna get every time. Okay, second. <laughs> so we're gonna get at yis. Oops, tisse. At yise e. Okay. That's what it is. That's what it is. You cooked. At yisei is you cooked. Chwasei. At chwasei. At yisei. And then you could do chat yisei. Chat yisei. You could do chat yisei. But now it's like, you were cooked. You cooked me. Whatever. Everybody. You put that in like a Hansel and Gretel. At so yes, now we're on our way. We okay, are on okay, our way. Okay, it's making sense. We're on our way. Okay.
Okay, so now we get the equals you see e, right? And that now anything could come before because it doesn't even affect the verb. Sa you see e, chat you see e, zisgli you see e, but that's all outside of the verb. It doesn't matter. Right? So there's the you see e. Eu see e would be you got cooked. And then. So now. He or she cooked. What? Do. Plus. You. You. Do. It has see. to be zero. There's do is the third person, like do ish, his or her dad. Mm. But the do as a subject would be people cooked. Mm. <laughs> and se. And it's, is it? So we're going to end up with at. And I think somebody, yes. A yautiskin has it. Wussi. Mm. See that? Yeah. Wussi. Oh, because the U. The dotted U turns into W. That'll be a W every time, every except, time. except when it's the U. Every time okay. except, the U. except the second person. So U always make it into a Y. I see. Y. Okay. Gotcha. So now, for the million dollars in Monopoly money, so now we're going to have. So if this ut changes to a third person, we have a third person object and a third person subject. What is the object going to be? An example in English like he or she cooked king salmon. Well, so yeah, yeah, so he or she cooked it king salmon, right? The ut goes away. The ut goes away, but something has to go in its place now. You cannot have two zeros, so oh, the oh, object no. must become. Oh, I know this, but it's like you can visualize it, but you can't find the words. So, for example, I know it, Khwaseku. You know it, Yiseku. He or she knows it, Seku. Auseku. It has to become an A, right? No, I didn't know it. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> three on three, the object must become A. So this is why you get Ausaku, Ausa whatever. So now we're going to get Ausa E. Way too soon. Way too soon. <laughs> but it's in there latent, like, you know, like, like circulating a little bit right. now. I, did a little, I had a little sign up here years ago that says, Who's down with three on three? You know me. And then it says the, the zero to the A. Right. So that's that's all. But you know that's what that stuff is. This is all the sort of under the hood kind of stuff. It starts to make sense when we start doing these kinds of things. And so we've we've looked at just sort of changing one verb, but now we start changing that particular verb to to that. So um, we're out of time. But if you had zero. Perfective. We we cooked it. To Lucy, no. So what would this Y become? W. Yep. So what to say? E. Switch them. What to say? E. We cooked it. Right. But how do we know about the to? Uh, that, oh, that's just because it's it's the. Um, that's the pronoun the for pronoun we. The pronoun for. Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. We got this. We got this. <laughs> Spanish conjugating was so much easier. <laughs> I agree, hundred percent. So you know, <laughs> and we do have these. There's these charts. And I guess there's some other chapters out there too that talk about this thing. That looks. That makes me have a headache. That's gonna give me nightmares. That chart. Okay. I know, they look terrifying. <laughs> they look like I should be like studying legal something, stuff. And someday that might mean something, yeah. but right now it's just right. like, don't look But this, it. yeah, so, Khwase, Wutuse, Yese, 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 Wududze, Wuse, What's the si part of that? So what this is saying is that capital C is just saying a consonant. It could oh. be an S, it could be an L, it could be a DZ, it could be an SH, it could be a J. Could be a D. Are there vowels? 
Well, then it lists the vowel, right? So then, yeah, so this, the capital V would be vowel. Oh, okay. So this could be K-A, Kahwa, whatever, right? This could be T-U, Tukhwa. This could be S-H-A, Shahwa. Okay, but we went one step too far. You guys are awesome. Great. Thank you.